بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It is my pleasure to welcome you to the IOU's orientation for the fall 2023 semester. You have been given the blessing of walking on the path of knowledge of Allah and his final message. We ask Allah to bless you on this journey and to accept it from you and reward you as long as you are on this path. Ameen. In our orientation session today, we will explore the concept of mindful learning in the age of distractions. Allah tells us in the Quran, Surah Al-Mujadila, verse number 11, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah will raise those who have believed among you and those who were given knowledge by degrees. And in Surah Al-Ra'd, verse number 11, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Indeed, Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. This portion of the verse in Surah Al-Mujadila reminds us that belief and attaining knowledge are among two qualities of excellence in a person and that these are the reasons for a person to excel and be elevated among others. We may not understand why a person is distinguished or stands out among others, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees this station due to belief and due to having been given knowledge. Also, Allah affirms in Surah Al-Ra'd that he Jalla Jalaluhu does not change a nation or a people until they have changed themselves. We must seek change, that is transformation first, then Allah will make that transformation easy and accessible. Today's orientation session, inshallah, we will go over the following information for you. We will begin the orientation with the Chancellor's address to the students, moving on to discussion on offered programs, study material and course evaluation. We will then discuss study method, semester cycle, and how to seek support from the faculty. We will then move on to discussing about exam centers, importance of assignments, address to scholarship students, time management with student counselor, we will then have a quick demo on navigating through the student dashboard. We will discuss the student representative council and how you can be a part of local student committees, students code of conduct and complaint procedure. We will then move on to a QA and a session with Sister Aisha Ahmed and finally conclude the orientation with a word of thanks. Dear students, I'm sure all of you are very familiar with Dr. Bilal Phillips, who is the founder and chancellor of IOU. He begins our session with a personal address to you. Dr. Bilal is a Jamaican Canadian Islamic scholar. Shortly after his reversion to Islam, he embarked on a spiritual academic journey to the other side of the world, seeking Islamic knowledge in Saudi Arabia, where he completed a bachelor's in Islamic studies in Al Madina and a master's in Islamic theology in Riyadh, and later a PhD at the University of Wales in Islamic theology. Dr. Bilal Phillips has written, translated, and commented on over 50 published books on various Islamic topics. He has also edited and published the 56 book Iman reading series for children and presented Islamic programs for a number of years on Riyadh channel, Sharjah TV, as well as Peace TV, Huda TV, Islam Channel, and The Dean Show. Without any further delay, dear students, Dr. Bilal Phillips. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. The world today is a cauldron of confusion with new ideologies being thrust into the forefront of the media. 
Education is changing. People are being driven towards confrontational and anti-religious customs. We are living in a time when adhering to Islamic values is indeed like clinging on to hot coals. In the midst of all of this, the International Open University, IOU, stands firmly committed to offering higher education infused with Islamic values in all fields of study. Being faced with the tribulations of our current times, while remaining laser focused with determination and steadfastness based on authentic knowledge, promotes success in weathering the tempest of the modern anti-religious onslaught. IOU remains an anchor in the midst of this chaos by providing its students the ability needed to avert them from being swayed away from attaining their goals as a direct result of deviation from Allah's path. Instead of losing course, all of us at IOU strive to push ahead, determined to work towards our goals. Seeking knowledge is a lifelong obligation for Muslims. Talabul ilmi farid ala kulli Muslim. We are encouraged to learn new knowledge and skills. We are also admonished to use this knowledge for the benefit of ourselves, the betterment of our families, our societies, and humanity in general. Whether it be a trade, a hobby, or knowledge, all newly acquired information can be used to better our lives and the lives of those around us. With that, IOU is proud to announce the introduction of some new streams of study, inshallah, coming in the fall of 2023. MSc in psychology, MAIS, which is research-based, and a master's in Arabic linguistics, which is also research-based. Maintaining the focus on providing the Ummah with quality Islamic education to revive the grandeur to the Islamic nation. IOU is also working on introducing the master's level studies in IBEF, Islamic Banking, Economics and Finance. Also master's in business administration and education in the near future. By Allah's permission, and by Allah's grace. The International Open University has been instrumental in bringing education to the Ummah for over a decade. What began as a single degree program of study in Islamic studies has flourished into the general diploma in Islamic studies, which is free. The GQMC, which is the global Quran memorization center providing for thousands to study the Qur'an, to memorize the Qur'an, wherever they are in the world. And a degree campus of seven majors, Islamic studies being the initial degree, which later evolved into degrees in psychology, education, information technology, business administration, Islamic economics, and Arabic language. IOU also has programs for those who speak Russian, Indonesian and Urdu, while the world struggled to offer education online during the COVID outbreak, IOU was already in place and ready to continue providing authentic knowledge to the Islamic nation. It was fully capable of delivering the quality learning experience required for the future of online education. With Allah's blessings, IOU seeks to add to the body of knowledge that it is providing to the Ummah in the next semester and in the near future. Muslims are instructed by Allah to be mindful. Allah challenges us in the Quran in Surah Muhammad verse 24. He said, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا 
do they not reflect upon the Qur'an? Or are their hearts locked up? We are admonished not only to read the Qur'an and to learn it, to memorize it, but to reflect and be mindful of the Qur'an and what it contains. To make the conscious decision to follow it and to act upon it. To act upon what Allah has sent in His final message. Therefore, mindful learning is the basis of a Muslim's education. Deciding to learn knowledge, whether Islamic studies and learning about Allah and His messages sent to humankind throughout human history, or to learn otherworldly knowledge. However, all within the scope of Islamic principles, which would be, inshallah, pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each Muslim will be asked about the time he or she has spent from the time he or she was given. We can use the new life situations to fall into despair and our own destruction, or we can choose to refocus our intentions, to redirect our lives and the use of our time, which is a gift given to us by Allah, to be mindful of our situations. And what may be a new direction given to us by Allah for our future. And to learn new knowledge and skills and improve the ummah with this knowledge. Mindful learning is making the choice to study Islamic studies or to study other sciences from an Islamic perspective, being conscious of what we learn, who we learn from, and how we learn. What we learn, we should be learning about Allah and His final message, which is included in the worldly subjects as well, so that all knowledge is gained and utilized in ways which Allah approves. Who do we learn from? We should be learning from reputable scholars who have learned from reputable scholars whose knowledge is taken from original sources how we learn putting in the requisite time and effort to learn what is taught well and revising this knowledge making the knowledge a part of us and not just something we pass through beneficial knowledge is so important we have supplications both for it and against its opposite. The Prophet ﷺ taught us, Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'ah. O oh Allah, I ask you for beneficial knowledge. And he also taught us saying, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa'ah. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from useless knowledge. Therefore, mindful learning is also analyzing the knowledge at hand and deciding if it is actually beneficial or not and focusing on that which is of benefit while using that focus to direct our lives and the lives we influence towards pleasing Allah and ultimately bringing us closer to Him. I ask Allah to make this a beneficial year for all of those who are connected to IOU as student body, faculty, and administration, and to bless our efforts and accept them as sincerely made for His pleasure. Ameen. Barakallahu feekum, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khairan kathira, Dr. Bilal. We ask Allah to bless your efforts and preserve you for the IOU and the Ummah. Dear students, it is imperative that we familiarize ourselves with the category our program falls under, as the rules governing these categories are different. You may check the name of your program at the top right corner of your account after login. As of now, at the International Open University, we offer two kinds of programs, revised programs that consist of new curriculum and ongoing programs that consist of older curriculum. 
Under revised programs, we have undergraduate programs, just undergraduate programs like Bachelor of Arts in Arabic language studies, Bachelor of Arts in Islamic studies, Bachelor of Science in Islamic economics, banking and finance, Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Science in Psychology, and Bachelor of Education with a concentration in English. Under graduate programs, we have Master of Arts in Islamic Studies, which is research oriented. We have Masters of Art in Arabic Language Studies, which is again research oriented. And we have Master of Science in Psychology and Islamic Counseling. Under postgraduate programs of the ongoing programs that consist of older curriculum, we offer certificate programs such as Bridge to Masters in Islamic Studies and Bridge to Masters in Arabic. For graduate programs, we offer Master of Arts in Islamic Studies. For undergraduate programs, we have Bachelor of Science in Information and Technology. For certificate programs, we have Certificate in Business Administration, Certificate in Psychology, Certificate in Islamic Banking, Economics and Finance, Certificate in Information and Technology, and Certificate in Education. For associate degree programs, we have the Associate Degree in Business Administration, Associate Degree in Psychology, Associate Degree in Islamic Banking, Economics and Finance, Associate Degree in Information and Technology, and Associate Degree in Education. Lastly, as open education programs, we offer the Intensive Arabic Program and the Audit Stream. Once enrolled into the IOU courses, you have access to the following study material, which will aid you in your studies. The course text. The course text is the core text that will be used for the course. It is available as an e-copy on your course dashboard that can be downloaded. Next, we have the module or the unit audios or videos that are recorded sessions of the explanations of the topics covered in the book. The content of the audio and video is the same. The supplementary recorded sessions are additional recordings by the course teacher to help you understand the concept better. This is followed by the midterm and final study questions, which will help you gauge your understanding of the topic. Please note that this is not a document that gives you access to the questions that will appear in the exams. It is only for practice. For the exams, you are advised to study from all the material listed above. Course evaluation. The course evaluation is done through multiple ways and the aggregate is considered at the end. In simple words, each type of coursework contributes a certain fixed percentage to the final course grade. There is only one assignment to be submitted per course. The MAIS course-based courses have research papers to be submitted. All specific information can be accessed from the schedule. Each module or unit has a small test to be attempted in order to proceed with the next module test. You should be knowing which course category you fall under, revised or non-revised, as the exam pattern is slightly different. For all revised programs, the midterm and final exams are of two parts. Part A has the most multiple choice questions, while part B are open-ended questions. As for the non-revised programs, it is only one part with multiple choice questions. These are the essentials on the course page in order to ensure that effective learning takes place. Number one, event schedule and calendar for important deadlines. Number two, course syllabus section. This section offers a detailed analysis of what you will be studying in the course. Number three, Download or read course textbooks for each course or module. The textbook will be provided by IOU and available on your course dashboard. This is essential throughout the course as the course teacher will be using this book to proceed. Next, watch 
or listen to course or module audios and videos. The content on the audio file is exactly the same as the video file. However, students find it useful sometimes to download the audio and play it while they're working or commuting. This is an extremely useful feature as our students have vouched for it as well. Course notes section. These notes are not written by ILU, but have been shared by our dedicated students. You may refer to them, but IOU is not liable for any errors on it. Lastly, seek clarification through the student discussion forum and ask the teachers forum and emailing course faculty directly. These forums are a good platform for the teachers and students to discuss their questions or seek clarifications. Study method for revised programs. There are two parts of the midterm exams and final exams. Part A consists of 30 MCQ questions with a 60 percentage of total weightage. Part B consists of open-ended questions with a 40% weightage of the total course grade. Number of questions will vary from course to course. Midterm exams as well as final exams are required to be attempted at the exam center for students of the revised programs. The maximum allowed duration to complete a revised program for midterm exam uh, for full-time students is six years and for part-time students is nine years. Accelerated plan for revised program is not available. Students will not be allowed to retake a particular mo module or course more than three times. Students who do not complete at least 25 credits from first year curriculum within first calendar year shall not be allowed to continue the program. Study method for revised programs versus for all programs except revised programs. For students of revised programs, the midterm exams are required to be attempted at an IOU approved exam center. Finals are also required to be attempted at an IOU approved exam center. For students of all programs except revised programs and MAIS and PhD, the midterm exams are required to be attempted at home whereas the final exams are required to be attempted at an IOU approved exam center. Study method for revised programs like Master of Arts in Islamic Studies research oriented and Master of Arts in Arabic language studies research oriented as well as Master of Science in Psychology in Islamic counseling. Only full-time study plan is available for these courses. Please remember that there are different number of modules in each course for each program. There are also different number of credits for each course. You may refer to the curriculum listed on the website. There are different number of modules in each semester. There are different evaluation schemes for each of these courses. The midterms as well as the final exams of these courses are required to be attempted at the exam center for theoretical courses. The maximum allowed duration to complete the program for full-time students is two years with the maximum duration of four years. The part-time students, for part-time students, it's four years with a normal duration of six years. Accelerated plan for these programs is not available. Students will not be allowed to retake a particular module or course more than three times. Students who do not complete at least 25 credits from first year curriculum within first year calendar shall not be allowed to continue the program. Study method for master's programs such as the master's in Islamic studies, which is course-based. Please note that there will be no midterm exams. Research paper constitutes about 50% in the evaluation scheme. And the first half of the module tests need to be completed by 18 June, 2023. Please make sure you review the reading material or view or listen to the lectures using the notes provided and adding your own, then attempt the module test. Study method for the intensive Arabic program. 
The semester in the intensive Arabic program is divided into two sessions named Fall 2023 Session 1 and Fall 2023 Session 2. The Fall 2023 Session 1 commenced on 1st September 2023. The Fall 2023 Session 2 will commence on 24th of November 2023. Each semester has two sessions, each with a midterm exam and a final exam. In each session, you can study only one course at a time, and each course is a prerequisite to the next course. That means you can only enroll in IAP Arabic 102 after passing IAP Arabic 101 course. The event schedule and calendar for IAP is different from other programs. The Intensive Arabic program students can see the Intensive Arabic program calendar on their dashboard. In order to better understand the placement of the different elements of your course page, here's a short tutorial. You may also log in to your course page and navigate along with us. you through how a course page looks like. So this is the course page that we have logged into. The main area of the course page will include course forums. Here you have any announcement pertaining to that particular course. By a course, we mean a subject and not the program. So you may be in the program BAIS degree, but in that you are in a course, say, Aqida 101, or that is AQD 101. So this is how a course page looks like. You have the course forum wherein you have the announcements for announcements portal where all announcements pertaining to that course will be made by a course teacher followed by ask the teacher this is a forum where you can post a query directly to your teacher and she will get back to you on the portal itself students discussion forum is for students to discuss amongst themselves of, the, of any doubt that they have when covering the program or anything related to the course itself Technical feedback forum is for those who would like to report a technical issue they face on the course page. Moving ahead, the next block is course text and study material. Here, all the text material that you require for this course will be present over here. And all of this study material is what is mentioned in the modules going ahead. So, for, in order to access it, you just need to click it and it will get saved onto your device. Course notes section usually includes notes not by the university but made by the semester students of the earlier semesters. So you may access them and go through it but IU does not take liability for those notes as those are not prepared by IU itself. You have live sessions next which is within, under this block, you might have the recordings of the previous live sessions or you will also have the link to the upcoming live sessions under this block. After that commences the modules, wherein you have all the modules and under modules, you will have the module notes, you will have the module audio, module video, which will be divided into parts or it will be a single video. The module audio is nothing but the audio of the video and it is not different from the video in any way. It is usually used, utilized by those students who would like to download the lessons and listen to them um, while doing their other chores or going through their commitments. If some modules do not have a PDF attached to it, it just means that there is not there is no PDF required for that particular module and at some in some courses you will see that the page numbers are mentioned if the page numbers are mentioned you are requested to go through the course text and study material to see which book and which page numbers are referenced towards the middle of the course page you will find an assignment page research paper is only applicable for certain courses and not all courses you will find an assignment page and in the assignment page 
you can then go through the assignment that is listed after you along with the details that are mentioned in for example this assignment over here when you click on the assignment it will give you instructions in the first go and then it will also inform you of all the specifications that you need to be aware of and here you have the question in the form of a PDF which you need to download and then based on the instructions given you need to complete the assignment after the assignment you have certain study questions please note that these study questions are not the only questions that you need to memorize or you need to study for the exams there can be questions that are asked outside these study questions following which you have the midterm exam which will be activated at the time of the midterm and before that you will have no access to it so when it is time for the midterms during that period only this portal will be open all you need to do is click on this link and it will take you to the exam page following that you have the remaining modules which are laid out in the same manner as the other modules are laid out and each module ends with a module test which is compulsory for you to attend in order to activate the module test of the next module towards the end of the course page you have the link to the final exam just like the midterm exam this link will only be active when it is time for the exams to begin that is during the exam week only this link will be active apart from that on the course page on the right side of the course page you have the teacher contact details and this teacher will be the one who is going to support you through the course you have their name their email id in some cases you also have their phone number and their office timings below that you have the evaluation scheme wherein the session tests are nothing but the module tests the module tests contribute to 15 percent of the course grade midterm exam contributes to 30 percent final exam 40 percent assignments 15 percent and that constitutes the passing mark of 50 percent below that you have a components this is all for you to have a look at a glance you know that this particular course has got 34 modules out of which 17 modules are what you need to prepare for your midterm exam and for your final exam you need to prepare for the other 17 modules and there is one assignment in this particular course so this can serve as a quick check for you as in in terms of planning out when and how you need to complete the modules and it also helps you to check it off saying that i've completed the modules now i can move ahead to the midterms and then the finals and then the assignments Dear students, this is the semester cycle. As you can see that Alhamdulillah, our semester has officially commenced yesterday on 1st of September, which is followed by an orientation session today on the 2nd of September, 2023. Shortly after, students can expect to receive the assignment questions, followed by the commencement of the midterm exam period once the normal midterm exam period ends, the deadline to submit assignments in the normal period begins, followed by the late assignment submission period and the late midterm exam period. The students are then required to register for the exam centers in preparation of the final exam period, followed by the late final exams period that marks the end of a semester. It is important to remember that the primary source for clearing your doubts or concerns about each course is the course teacher. Use any of the methods available through the course page to contact your teacher. That is via email, ask the teacher forum, or a phone call within the teacher's office hours. Social media groups are set up to help you as a student to reach out to other students. However, 
this does not replace the direct guidance from the course teacher. I would like to stress here that while it is not permissible for your course teacher to give you the correct answer on a missed module test question, this in no way implies that the course teacher is prevented from helping you concerning the modules and the test questions. You are permitted to inform your teacher of any missed question on a test and verify that it is indeed incorrect as computer errors occur and it may be marked incorrectly. In this case, the course teacher will manually adjust the mark giving you credit. If your answer is incorrect upon checking, the course teacher is allowed to clarify any misunderstanding of the information and direct you to the part of the lesson or reading material or lecture where you can find the correct answer. Also note that inquiries that mention the module test questions should never be posted in the discussions forum. Instead, they should be sent via email directly to the course teacher. Dear students, I owe you scheduling and operations run on UTC time. Do you know the time difference between your local time and UTC? Here's an activity. Use the link to determine UTC time in your local area. Type your city, and country, the current time, and the difference between UTC and current time. Currently, it is 1.38 p.m. UTC. So calculate the difference and share on the chat window. You have five minutes. Wonderful, we have a few responses coming. So Sister Iman says five hours of difference. Diha says she's three hours ahead. Manila, Philippines is eight hours behind. Kenya is three hours ahead of UTC, wow. Mariam says Saudi Arabia is three hours ahead. Idia says UTC is one uh, sorry, Nigeria is one hour later in, than UTC. One hour difference from England. Wow. Five hours ahead of UTC, seven hours ahead. One hour difference from London. Four hours later than EST in the USA, eight hours ahead, mashallah. We're all based in different time zones, isn't it? Philippines is eight hours ahead from UTC. UTC is three hours ahead from Kuwait. Maldives, five hours, two hours ahead. Berlin is two hours ahead. Wonderful. Thirteen hour Australia is thirteen hours ahead. Mashallah. Jazakumullah khairan kathira, dear students, for sharing in your time zone. I hope you have now understood how the time difference works, and now inshallah you're in a better position to calculate the time difference and stick to the UTC time zone that IOU schedules and operates on. Exam centers, dear students. Please note that it is compulsory to attempt midterm and final exams at the IOU approved exam centers. The IOU approved exam centers are separate organizations are, and are not affiliated to IOU in any way. Students must make complete arrangements with exam centers before attempting their midterm and final exams. Please note that the exam center procedure Exam center registration procedure includes contacting approved exam centers first via email, call, 
and a physical visit, checking availability for midterm and final exam dates and time, checking availability of your gender, checking if there's any fee that may be involved, and checking if the center is open on weekdays and weekends. Suggesting a new center is possible if there is no suitable center or the existing center is far away from you. Students are responsible to contact any proposed center and make all arrangements prior to notifying IOU about adding them as an exam center. Importance of focusing on assignments and research papers. Dear students, you are researchers. Your research begins now. While asking questions is okay and helpful, as a researcher, you should begin by trying to find the answers to queries yourself by searching for them. Especially in the MAIS, they consist of a major portion of the overall grade, even in undergrad studies. However, there is more to the research put into assignments than just attaining a mark. The various projects also develop various skills required for many types of research and verification of information in life. Dear students, please note that we have a telegram group for assignments and research papers for brothers as well as sisters. If you wish to be added into those groups, please contact Help Desk. There are some points worth mentioning concerning the scholarship program. Number one, the funds allotted for the scholarships are donated by generous donors, especially reserved for the deserving. It is expected that the students on scholarship will give the opportunity its due right by performing well. Number two, the scholarship students are required to enroll in minimum six courses and pass them all. BSc psychology students must enroll in at least five courses and ensure to pass all. For IAP students, they are required to enroll and pass in one course. Thirdly, being a scholarship student, you are not allowed to drop courses or switch programs. And finally, awarding of scholarship, subsequent scholarships, depends upon your academic performance. IOU holds the authority to renew, levy fines, and even terminate the scholarship based on the level of compliance with the scholarship policies. Dear students, effective studies require good time management skills. And I'm delighted to share a few tips here to help you manage your time better. Number one, begin by renewing your intention. Ask yourself, who am I doing this for? Am I studying this course for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How will this course help me become a better Muslim and become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Make sure you consistently renew, reflect, and remind yourself of your ultimate goal. Secondly, prepare a schedule. Find a good time to study during the day. You can even go around and look for a good place to study in case you have distractions at home. Make sure you're studying at a quiet space at a time when you feel most productive. Thirdly, make sure you mark all important dates, such as exam dates, assignment deadlines on your personal calendar. I recommend students to use the Google Calendar and sync that to your phone so that you receive notifications and reminders before a deadline is due. Lastly, remember to take breaks and practice stress management skills like deep breathing, meditation, and speaking to your loved ones for support. If you need any further support, please do not hesitate to contact our student counselor for further assistance. At the Student Affairs Office, we strive to engage in all aspects of students' lives and collaborate with students, faculty, staff, alumni, and many others in the delivery of key services and support to students. We aim to offer programs and services that support the optimal growth of students and enhance their intellectual, social, religious, 
and academic development by providing opportunities for students to experience education and explore interests beyond the classroom. We also aim to increase student engagement in university activities by providing and promoting quality services and programs. We aim to support a diverse community of learners to enhance student life and create opportunities to develop students as ethical and responsible leaders who make positive impacts in the community. We aim to increase student retention by creating a more inclusive and supportive environment that fosters a sense of connectedness to the university. Our dedicated team offers several services to students to assist them with their academic journey at IOU. Various offices of the Student Affairs Office are there for you to provide seamless study experience. Hence, you may contact Student Information and Support Center for any administrative queries you have by sending an email to contact us form on Student Support tab on the dashboard or send an email to helpdesk at iou.edu.gm. Student Success Team aims to see students successfully completing their education at IOU. Hence, you will find the team contacting you via call, as well as some social media applications, and would try to keep you on track. You can also schedule an appointment for live call to discuss your study concerns. The student counselor can help you in time management and developing various study skills so that you ace your studies. Get in touch with the student counselor by filling the form available on the student counseling page. The student counselor is also running separate telegram groups to provide assistance, especially for female students with young kids, working professionals, and elderly students. Students with special needs are also encouraged to get in touch with her. Lastly, we encourage you to download Telegram application in your smartphone and get in touch with your fellow senior students to get study support and motivation. Login page. Once you enter your or username as well as your password, and we log in. This is how your dashboard would look at the beginning. There are a couple of components over here that we need to go through in order to access the different features that are there on the dashboard, and also for us to complete the courses that we are enrolled in. Starting off at the top. Under My Courses, you will see a drop-down. This will give you an idea of the courses that you are enrolled into. Currently, if the student is enrolled into one course, they can see the first course over here. And if there are many other courses, those can be seen over here under My Courses. Now, if you want to access the courses that you have enrolled into quite easily, then this is your place. You just come over here. Click on the drop down and then you can gain access to your courses. Other than that, next to it you have the courses button. And when you click on the courses button, you have multiple tabs that you can gain access to. The first one is the enrolled courses. This is a list of courses that you are enrolled into as a student. The student is currently enrolled into Orientalism, that is DHD Fine Art 2. And the course is hyperlinked, so if you open uh, the, when you click on the hyperlink, you can directly go to the course page. Next, over here, it will also give an idea about the course grade as to what is the course grade for that particular course. Now, as you can see over here, that the course does not have any grades recorded and that is why it shows cannot view any grades. Over here, it will tell you the number of modules that are pending for you. So in this course, for the student, module one, starting from module one, the student has an attempt So that's the module that it is showing you. Suppose you have completed 10 modules, it will show you module 11 over here, and you can directly access the course and the modules from this tab. Under all courses, you have the list of courses that are available in your program so you can have a look at all the courses that are available in your program under all courses 
Under completed courses, you will get an idea about how many courses have you completed and the grade that is put against it. In case you find some semesters over here in which the courses are not completed, so you can prioritize those and complete them in the upcoming semesters. Next tab is calendar. And the calendar will give you an idea about what are the deadlines of certain uh, the exams of the coursework that is there pertaining to your enrolled program. Next is exam centers and we have two tabs under that one is info and the other is arrangement. Now under the exam tab you will have all information of your exam centers and other details on how to register for it. Now in case you do not have a center in your area and you would like to register for a new center, under exam centers you have the tab that says arrangement. When you click on that you will get all the details of the center that you can possibly recommend to IMU to act as a center for the exams. The existing center information will be available under info and all of that information will be visible to you as soon as the portal opens. You will only be able to see those centers that are in the country that you have registered from. In case you would like to apply for a center for a non-resident country, you will see a link in which you need to click. But all information regarding an exam centers can be accessed through this tab at the top. Then you have student support, which is divided into multiple areas of student affairs office. We have semester cycle, student handbook, and so on and so forth. So anything that you would like to refer to in, in order to understand how things work or even a set of how to's, for example, how to register for the Tajweed class, how to en unenroll from a course, how to apply for a waiver, all of this can be found under student support. When clicking on the right tab, you will be directed to the whole set of information. Apart from this, what is important for us is at the right side, top right side, you will see your name as well as their student ID. Many students wish to know their student ID is exactly at the top right of your dashboard. What you see in terms of the time over here is the UTC time. So this becomes a good reference point for you. All you need to do is compare this time with your local time and then you will understand how ahead or how behind you are of the UTC time. This is extra beneficial during examinations when you have the portals getting closed at 6 p.m. UTC. So instead of converting the time to your local time zone and which may result in some mistakes, all you need to do is look at this clock at the top right in order to understand what is the UTC time. Moving on. And the panel that you have over here, you once again have calendar announcements or courses, course enrollment, grade history and health desk. Calendar is similar to what you saw at the top. Apart from that, you have announcements. As a student at IOU, wherein we are using the online medium, it is absolutely essential for us as students to ensure that we check the announcements portal all the time in order to check for any latest announcements. So here you have an entire, it becomes a, an announcement board or a notice board wherein we have all the important information, all important announcements made on this portal. Next, you have all courses, which is similar to the courses tab that we saw on top, followed by course enrollment. This is used in when you wish to enroll into your courses. Grade history will show you all the grades of the completed courses so far um, in or it which will be divided as per the semesters in which you have completed it in and then you have help desk in order to raise a query directly from your dashboard without emailing all you need to do is key in your subject select the issue type 
write down a brief about issue and if you have a supporting document add it on and submit it you don't have to go and create an email from your inbox you can directly send a query from your dashboard the next important part of your dashboard is the schedule block here you will be able to see the academic calendar based on the program that you are enrolled in and here you only have a view of all the important dates that are required in terms of your coursework. Furthermore, you will have additional details in terms of these information blocks that are given at the bottom of the dashboard and these information boxes are self-explanatory and it can be utilized in order for you to have to go through any academic concerns if you have this is for normal course enrollment early course enrollment and these are the extra course enrollments like i mentioned these names are self-explanatory so for any query or any portal that you wish to access you're requested to come to the dashboard and go through these course which go through these blocks that are mentioned over here and click on the relevance link for example if you have any exemption request you will go through the request block and then select the one that is applicable under documents it is all referring to the document request that you have or the ones that you would like to apply for exams the exam center info that we spoke about at the beginning is also mentioned over here any error reports that you need to make fee issues student services support all of these blocks are at the on your dashboard from where you can access all the information that is required Dear students, IOU has an international body of student representatives of both IOU staff as well as students who are based in different parts of the world and can be reached via email or telegram. Find your local student committee, or if you don't have one, make one by contacting scofficer2 at iou.edu.gm. To view and reach out to our representatives and student committees, visit www.iou.edu.gm slash representatives. While it is the goal we strive for at IOU that all members, including administration, staff, and students have a positive and beneficial experience while affiliated with IOU, we do realize that Shaifan never rests. Stirring up animosity, especially among Muslim brothers and sisters, is one way for Shaitan to attain the goal of separating believers from aspects of following the deen. Therefore, just as every institute needs a code of conduct to promote a positive and balanced environment in which to operate, IOU as well has outlined some detailed protocols with regards to studies, examinations, social media, communication with the faculty, and live webinars. Please familiarize yourself with the code of conduct accessible through the student support dashboard. For any student who contravenes these rules, strict disciplinary action shall be taken. The grievance procedure at IOU opens the channel through which your own complaints and grievances can be heard and appropriate solutions are provided. Hence, you all must familiarize yourself with the grievance policy as outlined on the student's code of conduct page so that issues are resolved appropriately. Basically, if you have any complaints against any student or staff or faculty member, you should first try to resolve these issues with the relevant person through polite discussion. If this does not resolve, then you can report an academic grievance against any faculty member through the teacher complaint portal. Non-academic grievance can be brought into the attention of the Secretary of the Disciplinary and Grievance Committee by sending an email to grievances at iou.edu.gm. We do wish to remind our students that taking grievances to open social media forums and spreading accusations is not only Islamically reprehensible, it could possibly put the student into a situation of facing account for such rants in front of Allah on Yawm al-Qiyamah. 
Please, dear students, fear Allah, even in anger, and take appropriate steps to resolve issues. Do not enter into riba and namima over something that should be solved quietly. We remind ourselves first and then others that shielding the misdeeds of others while seeking retribution for actions is because of Allah also covering our own misdeeds that we may not even remember. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all and guide us. Ameen. Dear students, would you be able to take a moment to share your feedback for the orientation session? The link to the feedback form has been shared on the chat window. And now, dear students, we will move on to the Q&A session where you can send in your questions that you either had before the session or have accumulated during the session. We have Sister Aisha to answer your questions and clarify any issues you have about the upcoming semester. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to all our dear students listening to us today. Alhamdulillah, we have reached the last segment of our orientation session where we will answer any questions you have regarding your studies at IOU. As informed earlier, you can post your questions in the YouTube chat box and we will go over them, inshallah. So the first question is from Khuram Jamal. How are the BAIS program students finding community work? The community service work that is accepted uh, from these semesters onwards is that it would have to be an organizational work or otherwise a community service work which is initiated by the student in collaboration with more than two students. So it should be three students uh, or more. Now, it is not necessary that there should be students. They can be others from outside as well but no individual community service work will be accepted. As for what type of community service can be done, how can it be taken forward, all of those details are available on the course dashboard. If you move down to the portals, you will find a community service portal. Once you click on that, you will find all details on how to do the community service work. IOU ourselves, we have placed a number of organizations and links and contact numbers to them so that you may contact them and approach them for community service work. There are over 10 organizations and institutions who you can contact for a variety of different work, and this is how you can accumulate your community work. Inshallah. The next question is from Zulfikar Awesome. 
we really hope that IOU team can provide a curriculum for kindergarten to year 12 students in the near future, inshallah. Inshallah, we will put forth your feedback to the teams ahead and inshallah, we will look into it. The next question is by Abdiya. If a person fails a module test, can they retake the test? What will be the procedure then? Retaking a module test or an exam is not an option. So if a student is not able to score well in a module test or an exam, retaking it is not possible. There is, uh, I would like to clarify at this point that there are no pass or fail marks for a particular test or exam. So for example, if you get two on five in a module test, that does not mean that you have failed the module test. We do consider the aggregate of the module tests as well as the exams and all the coursework that you're doing in terms of assignment, exams and module tests, all of that together, we take certain percentages which you can access on your course page at the right side, you have the components, you have the evaluation scheme over there. In that, it will tell you how much percentage of the module test or the midterm exam or the final exam and the assignment is considered towards your final grade of the particular course. So the cutoff, of course, would be 50 percent. And that is all, all of these scores are accumulated, the percentages are accumulated, and then you get a final score for your particular course. And that is how we say that if a student has passed or failed a course, a particular test or exam or assignment does not have a fail mark that is to be given. Retaking is not an option. The next question, are the exams fixed on specific dates or is it based on availability of the center? Exams are, I, it's not on a specific date, but it is in a specific week. So within this week, students can attempt their exam as per their availability and the center's availability. So students are always requested to get in touch with their centers, confirm the dates with them, and let them coordinate to check whether it is available as per their commitments as well and then you can book the center and register the center with us so within that specific week students are expected to complete all their exams and the dates are already available on the schedule so the students can pre-plan this um, entire exam week is there any specific uh, restriction on the number of exams that can be given in a single day? No, students are free to give as many exams that they are enrolled into of the courses that they enroll into as many of them in a single day as they're comfortable with. The next question is from Um Salama. Can we make study groups uh, amongst yourselves uh, the students, if you are in contact with each other and would like to make study groups, you have the permission to do so. However, IOU will not be liable for any information that is shared on those groups or otherwise any personal information that is being exchanged because IOU will not uh, be a part of those groups. So if the students wish to with their personal choice, they wish to create a group and they would like to study, then that is absolutely allowed. However, students are restricted from sharing any questions, module questions, exam questions, or anything of that sort on these groups. This is just a study group where students can try to study together. Having said that, we also have Telegram groups for specific programs. So students can join there and they all the students that are uh, there in a program, they join those groups as per their choice. Again, it's not mandatory, but we always recommend it so that students can get updates uh, and they can stay uh, up to date on all the information that is being shared. The next question is, what do you mean by credits? Credits, if I have to put it in very simple terms, these are points that are given to a certain course. So based on each course has been allotted certain points and certain credits. These credits 
are taken by the students as per the study plan that they are enrolled in. For example, if you are, are taking your part-time studies, then you can enroll with anywhere between 25 to 40 credits. So how do you know how many credits is allocated to each course? You can visit the curriculum page wherein all the credits have been laid out. And if you have difficulty in accessing that, you can always email us and we will share with you the uh, entire credit list uh, from the site. So these credits, based on the number of, based on your study plan, you can choose anywhere between 25 to 40 credits. So let's say, for example, course A is uh, having a certain number of credits and course B is another number of credits. So the total of this course A, course B, and course C should be between 25 to 40. Now, suppose if course A, B, C is not coming up to 25 and you have to add course D, then you should be adding course D to make the total up to 25 because minimum is 25 and then we move up to 40. However, if you are in a full-time study plan, then you can take anywhere between 40 to 60 credits in, a, in the same manner. The next question, uh, for the BA English program, how can I apply to credit transfer from another university? Also, how to use my teaching hours as credit? The teaching hours will not be utilized as credits to the program. And uh, this about transferring your credits from another university to IAU. This is based, this is called the external credit transfer. For this, on the board, on your dashboard, you have a credit transfer portal that is there, but and it is a paid process. Uh, so we would definitely advise you to have a look at the curriculum and match it with the curriculum of your university from which you wish to transfer the credits to IOU. Match the curriculum, check if there is the same course, the same course content, the syllabus is covered, and then we would advise that you can apply for the credit transfer process and proceed with it. Of course, um, the university reserves the right to approve or disapprove your request based on the syllabus that is provided. So once you apply for credit transfer, it's not mandatory that your request will definitely be approved. Uh, the university reserves the right to approve or reject it. If we have already done a bachelor's degree, can I have a few courses waived? I believe that uh, the, the questioner is in the first semester of IOU right now because this orientation is for the first semester students. So in that case, um, if you are in the bachelor's degree, you cannot waive any courses. You would have to complete all the courses that are specified in the curriculum. Yeah. The course waiver, grade transfer, credit transfer, um, these options would not, uh, sorry, the, the waiver option will not be available for the program that you are in right now. The next question, the BSc IT accelerated course, how to apply for accelerated degree. Um, you don't have to specifically apply for an accelerated degree or an accelerated program for BS IT specifically. You can, when you're making the payment for the program, you can select the accelerated program. That is, you can select seven to nine courses that would automatically fall under accelerated and proceed to make the payment. Once the payment is done, you would be given access to enroll into seven to nine courses. So it is only based on the payment that is made. The next question is how to communicate with fellow students and how to link with Telegram group. For the Telegram group, you can have access to them on your core, on your dashboard itself. On dashboard at the top, uh, you will in the top bar, you will have the student support. Under that, the Telegram links are given. If you're not able to access it, you can always email us at help desk and we will help you with the links in Shalma. As for communication with fellow students, there are um, different ways in which you can do that. One is on your course page itself. This would be communication with specific students who are in the course that you are enrolled into. You can use the student discussion forum and then you can have discussions over there. However, students are advised to have discussions which are specific to the courses and it is not outside the course discussion. 
Um, apart from that, you can join the Telegram groups and there you can have uh, your discussions uh, with the fellow students. And the next question is, what do I do if during the midterms I will be in a different country? For all students who will not be in their registered uh, country of residence uh, during the midterms or the final exams, then you have an option of non-residence center. Once the registration opens up, you can access the non uh, the non-resident uh, center. You can click on it and then you will be allowed to register for a center outside your registered um, res country of residence. And you will have to wait for approval from our end and then your, um, your portal will be activated to select a center in the country that you have um, specified. So you would be requested to provide certain documents to support your claim as well. And then once approved, you can definitely take a take the exam in a different country as well. The next question is by E.S. Rafi. How to find out exam centers? Um, on your course page, or oh, sorry, on your dashboard at the top, you have an exam centers. You have a tab that says exam center. When you click on it, you will be able to reach the exam center registration page. And on that, once you, you will find all your exam centers, when you proceed to register, you will find all the exam centers that are specific to the country of residence that you are in, basically the country that you have registered your account under, those centers only will be visible to you and you can proceed to pick the center of your choice from there after confirming with the center where you wish to write the exam. This is absolutely essential to your students before registering for a center Please call up the center. Uh, call. Um, you can either call them up if you're not answering the call. Visit them and see the place, and only then register for the center so that we avoid all last-minute hassles uh, during the exams. The next question is by Harun. Can one skip a semester due to other commitments such as secular studies exams? Um, IU does not recommend skipping a semester, but due to certain circumstances, if a student wishes to skip a semester, then you would have to op apply for abeyance. Abeyance is basically a process wherein you are taking a semester break uh, due to uh, certain reasons, but of course that is also uh, subject to approval. So once you apply for it and then the approval comes in, then you would uh, have to, then you will be allowed to skip a semester. Uh, the details and the procedure and requirements, all of that can be shared with you. If you require it, then you can email help desk for all further details. The next question is, when will we start our live class? Live class is available only for few courses in few programs, and it is not for all the courses in all programs. So if you have any live class or your course is uh, wherein a live class will take place, then you can always access the live sessions, um, the, the portal on the dashboard and the whole timetable of the live classes will be visible. But for those who do not have live classes, you can already start your studies by going through the recordings of the sessions that are there in all your course pages module after module, if you go through them, you will be able to access the recordings and start your studies. <clears throat> the next question is, what are the requirements to be enrolled for Master in Psychology and Islamic Counseling? You require the most um, eligible document would be a bachelor's in psychology. However, if you have a bachelor's in any other field, then you can send it to us for evaluation and we will, the registrar's office will get back to you uh, uh, on its validity. But as of now, uh, both the, even a psychology degree as well as a non-psychology degree is accepted. Uh, we also have an English requirement wherein, for example, an ILTS score or any other English uh, exam or TOEFL score has to be um, added along with the eligibility requirements for uh, the Master's in Psychology and Islamic Counseling. 
The next question uh, from Richard, any notable centers in Malawi? We have quite a few centers in Malawi as well, alhamdulillah. You can have a look at all the centers available as per the uh, procedure I have just listed right now. So you can go to, to the exam center portal and once you click on register at the bottom, once it's made available, once the portal is made available, you can click on register and then you can have a look at all the centers that are available for Malawi. Uh, the next question is by Hamran Yusuf. Pro, um, this is regarding masters in psychology and Islamic counseling. What if anyone has no knowledge of psychology? Will it be fine for him to come on research directly? This is again subject to approval by the registrar's office. So you may upload your documents, you may upload all the requested, uh, the requirements that are there, and then the registrar's office will get in touch with you uh, regarding your whether you will be able to proceed or not. The next question, how to register for exam centers near us. So on the exam center portal, uh, which is on your dashboard, once you click on the exam centers, um, you will be, sorry, when you click on uh, the required portal, you would be able to register for the center uh, from the portal that's given on top. So the minute you go to your dashboard, at the top you have exam centers, and from there, you can click on the register link and you can proceed. Uh, if, uh, Shafa, if you're referring to registering for a new exam center, which is not on the list, that too is an option. Uh, the certain requirements are there for registering a new center. Uh, those requirements have to be read very thoroughly and you will be directed to a form wherein you can register a new center. So suppose, for example, dear students, if the centers that are available, if it is not convenient for you or for some reason they are not available anymore, you have the liberty to suggest a new center which is more convenient for you, uh, but then you would have to make sure that they meet the requirements that have been listed on the center page. And that uh, after you fill in all the details, after you fill up the form, you will be contacted by a center's manager to be uh, to let you know whether the center is accepted or not. It also involves discussion uh, by our center's manager with the center that you're requesting for so that um, later when they act, if they're approved for a center, there is no problem uh, in communication and sharing the required details. The next question is by Ifra. If we are traveling in different countries and our exam dates clash, can we register in a country with just a visit? I assume, uh, I think you're referring to, can we register in a country with just a visa or visit visa, I believe? Uh, like I said, that shouldn't be a problem, uh, but then um, you would have to utilize the non-resident center. Uh, however, I would suggest to all our students that the exam dates are known well in advance. In fact, you can access them right away. So we would always request our students to plan these exam times really well uh, because we have two. We have midterms as well as the finals for the revised programs, which are to be given in the centers. And it can prove to be quite a hassle if we have to register for different centers so if it's an unavoidable reason and we have to travel, in that case, yes, utilizing the non-resident center um, uh, portal, then you can register for different uh, centers apart from your country as well. The next question is, I am in the Arabic degree program and one of my required courses is English. I already have English credits from my associate degree from NYC. Can I be exempted or have my previous credits transfer over? Exemption is uh, not possible without a credit transfer. So you can uh, apply for credit transfer. However, if you are a continuing student in the Arabic degree program, then you would have to email her this to check a few requirements. But if you are a new student, from this semester for 2023 is your first semester, then in that case, uh, you can apply for credit transfer 
uh, using the credit transfer portal, which is on the dashboard, and then uh, wait for approval from our end. The next question is, if I've paid the partial fee, when do I need to pay the rest of the fee? I assume uh, that this would be the installment option, so that would have been clearly communicated uh, regarding the dates about when you would have to pay the remaining fee, but if it is not the installment option, then you would have to email us just to elaborate on the reason for paying partial fee or which uh, option uh, you are availing at the moment. The next question is by Amna. I am a part-time student taking BAIS, so that there are six courses in the first semester, and I chose three, making credit points 36. So in the next semester, the other three courses have credit points 24. So can I choose courses from semester two? Yes, you can. You can take courses from semester two in order to complete the number of required credits. The next question is, uh, the midterm module for MAIS is in December, and I'm in part-time MAIS. Is it the same for part-time and full-time? Yes, absolutely. It's the same for part-time and full-time. Uh, let's um, For the part-time and full-time, uh, let me clarify that part-time and full-time does not mean that the, the semester duration will be shortened or elongated. However, it is only referring to the number of courses or the number of credits that the students are taking. So in part-time, there would be lesser courses or lesser credits, but in full-time, there will be more credits and or more courses. It has uh, nothing to do with the semester duration. However, the program duration, of course, in part-time will be much more than the program duration for full-time. So while you are in a semester in part-time mode, the deadlines, uh, all of them stay the same for all part-time as well as full-time students. The next question, I already selected six courses in this semester. However, I've changed my mind and I want to maximize my time. Is it possible to add one more course in addition to the rest? Okay, can I do that? Um, I This would depend on which program you're enrolled into. If you are enrolled into the revised programs, then you cannot cross 60 credits. Um, however, if you're not enrolled in the revised programs and you would like to add another course, then you can go for the accelerated option, pay the difference amount for seven to nine courses, and you may get enrolled into the additional course. However, I repeat, if you are in the revised programs, then you cannot opt for another uh, course over here. The next question, how to join the Telegram group of sisters is informed earlier. You can take the link from the dashboard at the top student support. You will find the Telegram link over there. If that's not accessible or that's not the group that you're referring to, you can definitely email us at helpdesk at ioe.edu.gm and we will be able to help you out with that. The next question, if I want to register a new center and I'm the only student in that area, can I register it? Definitely. If the center that you wish to register for has no problem with that, then we too have no problem in getting that center accepted. If it uh, meets our requirements, then even if it's only a single student, it's all right and we can proceed with that, inshallah. The next question, I'm having difficulty in understanding how much time it will take to finish all curriculum of semesters as a part-time student. And if I take three courses as the maximum credit point being 40. Um, for In order to give you a very exact and precise answer, I would have to know the curriculum you are in and the program that you have joined. However, uh, just if you would like to calculate it on your own, I would suggest that if you go to the curriculum page, once you go to the curriculum page, you would uh, be able to see all the courses that are listed along with the credits that they have. And then you can calculate, for example, if you're taking 36 um, or you're taking, say, 40 credits per semester, then how many courses would be left? 
and then you can calculate how many semesters you would need to complete that. So that would be the easiest way. And this applies, of course, to all students. If you are in the part time mode and you're unable to understand how long would you take to complete the semester, then you can definitely go to the, uh, the curriculum page on our IOU site, uh, go to the credits and you can calculate the credits and then you can yourself understand how long it would take to complete it. The next question by Sister Issa, so how can I manage the six courses with going to work? Okay, uh, for this, of course, um, the schedule, using the schedule that we have provided and I'm mapping down the timings of the exam, the deadlines that are given, be it for the assignments, be it for the module test or the exams, mapping these deadlines with your commitments and your work schedule would help. But along with that, uh, another thing that can, you can try is by calculating all the number of module tests you have. So for example, you're enrolled in, let's say, six courses, and each of these six courses have got, uh, let's say, 30. On an average, all the courses have 30 modules, if not lesser. Uh, so 30 courses, you would, you would get an idea that 30 into 6, I have got so many, around 180 modules to complete, right? Then you could start scheduling them. So in week one, I need to complete, say, 30, say, 10 modules or 12 modules of this particular course. Or otherwise, I can mix and match and do five modules of course one, five modules of course two. And in that way, then, once you put all of those modules down, you would be able to see that, all right, within this time, time A to time B, I'm able to complete so many modules. So let me then map the rest as per the deadline. So till the midterms, I need to complete 15 modules. On an average, 15 modules is what is requested, but then you can check the components on the right side of your course page to see how many modules are required for your midterm exam, and then try to finish the load for the midterm exam. Then accordingly, you can plan for the assignments and so on and so forth. Of course, this is very, very basic information of what I'm giving you. We will have sessions by a student counselor and we already have a number of sessions by a student counselor and how to manage the courses that we are enrolled in along with our work schedules. This is all on our YouTube channel. So I would definitely advise not only you, but then all our students to definitely have a look at it so that you have a head start into your program. The next question, uh, if you want to do the exam center uh, nearby, do we have to pay additional fee to the exam center? Um, the fees to the exam center, IOU is not partaking in this fee. IOU does not assign a fee to take the exams, nor does IOU assign a fee to register to the exam center. So if it is all subjected uh, to the exam center itself, if the exam center decides to charge a fee, then IU is not uh, responsible for that, and it's a complete arrangement only between uh, the center and the student. So let's say if the exam center says that they want you to pay some fee, then you would have to pay that. Uh, it does not have to do with uh, your exam center being nearby or far away, nothing of that sort. It all depends on the center you wish to register for. So um, as, as you all must have gauged by now that exam centers, there are a number of things that you need to look into. And that is why we always advise our students to um, make sure that they verify the centers well in advance, even before the deadlines are close up, closing in. Um, another thing, students, what you could do is uh, when you have a number of centers in your area and some centers charge while others do not, and you could uh, probably go for those options which do not charge if they are conveniently placed. The next question for BMAIS by Sister Matsura, by B, for BMAIS, all the exams, quiz, midterm, and finals, or all are MCQ, that is a multiple choice. Yes, all um, exam questions, quiz questions, module test questions, all of them are MCQ for BMAIS. Uh, the next question for by Komal for Certificate of Psychology. There are six modules in semester one. Can one study one module each time or do I need to study all six modules at the same time? 
and all the exams during the same time. I am going to assume that by modules you're referring to courses. There are six courses in semester one for certificate in psychology. Um, I believe you are in the older version where there are six uh, courses in semester one. Uh, in any case, for all the courses, um, it depends on the students, how they wish to go about it. They could either approach all the courses simultaneously or they could cover one course after the other. Uh, the advantage of covering the courses simultaneously is the fact that towards the end, when it's time for the midterm exam, it is not that you have finished course one in the first week of September, but once the exam is there, you've forgotten all about it. So you are in touch with it all through. IAU does not mandate that it has to be done in this way, one course after the other. You are given six months to complete the courses that are there. So within the six months and keeping in line with the deadlines that are given, you can cover them in whichever way you like, you're comfortable with and how you retain the information uh, that is there on those uh, courses. The next question, are there live sessions for BAALS program and what timing will be for those? Uh, for the courses that are in the earlier semesters, no, there are no live sessions for semester one courses for BALS. And if you would like to see the timings for those on the dashboard, you have a portal which says live sessions. You can have a look at it and the timetable would be visible for the live sessions over there. And that would also give you an idea if your course has a live session or not. Having said that, the courses that do not have live sessions, we have one revision session before the midterm exam and another revision session before the final exam. So students are always recommended to uh, attend these sessions because you can interact live with your teacher and ask them doubts and the teacher would also be going through the course material uh, in those live sessions with you. Okay, uh, the next question is on what CGPA does IOU operate? And does IOU offer first class, second class, upper class? Uh, we do not really categorize the uh, on your transcript, or we do not categorize it as first class or second class of that or anything of that sort. Yes, we do have the A star, B and C and so on and so forth. We do have the grades table and you can request for the transcript. Uh, once the semester is complete, you can request for a transcript which has the CGPA uh, marked on it as well. Uh, the next question is, I am a first year student of BAIS degree concerning the dashboard. Is it normal that in this section all courses there are three semesters, whereas I paid for only two? I am, um, I am not sure if I follow the question because um, we pay for semesters, uh, we are, the semester fee is paid semester wise. So if you have paid for three semesters or if you have paid for two semesters, it is not that if we pay for an, more semesters, we will be able to see more semesters on the dashboard. No, it does not work like that. Um, currently, if you're seeing three semesters, as the semesters go by, the further semesters will be added onto it. So it is not subject to uh, the payment that is made. The next question is, how can we get the degree uh, after completion of the program, inshallah? Uh, you will have to check your graduation requirement. There is a graduation status link wherein you can check whether you have completed the graduation requirements. And after that, you would have to apply via the link. Uh, there is, of course, a graduation fee that has to be paid. And once everything is in order, then um, and you apply via the portal, then the uh, degree will be airmailed to the student. Uh, students, please note that this does take around six to nine months for the degree to reach the student, six months being the ideal time. But sometimes if there is any delay, it can extend up to uh, nine months as well. But if students require a degree before that, for example, they need to apply to an organization or an institute and they would require their degree prior, we do pro provide a provisional um, a degree which the students can again apply for via the voter. This is, of course, inshallah, inshallah, the completion of your program at IOU. 
The next question by Jamila. How many hours uh, need to spend per week and per day by a full-time student? Um, this is a very subjective question. It varies from student to student. It varies depending upon the commitment of a student. It varies depending upon the retention ability of a student and how fast or um, how slow a student is able to grasp the content. And it also depends on how familiar the student is with the content already. For example, if you have a course uh, for which uh, of which the content you're already familiar with, you can move through the modules at a faster pace. You wouldn't have to spend a lot of time studying those modules or trying to understand them. However, at the same time, if the course is relatively new, the content is relatively new to you, then in that case, you would have to spend a little longer time. So um, on an average, if we would have to say that how long would you require per week and per day by a full-time student, each course per week, would definitely require um, close to six six hours or so. Uh, we're talking about uh, that again depends. This is on an average. Students do. Uh, there are some students who are able to complete it very quickly as well. So, uh, like I advised earlier, you can put down the schedule, you can match it up with your own schedules, and then uh, you can see how long would you need to spend on the specific courses. Uh, the next question, do we have live sessions or classes for BAIS? No, we do not have for the BAIS for semester courses. Uh, the next question is accelerated enrollment possible for associate degrees such as AIBE and the Associate of Psychology. Yes, it is possible. Accelerated is possible at this point in time. If you would like to do the accelerated mode of enrollment, then you will have to uh, pay the difference in fee. And once you pay the difference in fee, you can inform us at Help Desk and we will guide you as to how you can proceed to uh, enroll into the courses. Uh, the next question is by Evan Sir. If you fail in a module test, will the next module test be open to do that test? Yes, of course, it will be open. Uh, the restriction is that each module test must be attempted for the next module test to open. The score is not important. The score was not going to decide if the module test will be open or not. Okay. Um, this will be the last question that we take. Is there any chance to attend both exams in a consecutive period of time to minimize traveling expenses if the center is not closed? So if you are referring to taking uh, the course, the exams for all your courses, uh, then definitely uh, you can take them together. But then it is not possible to take um, different types of things, for example, midterms and uh, finals, take them in one period is not possible. Uh, different courses can definitely be attempted in the same, um, on the same day. That, that, there's no restriction on that. Right, so that would be the last question for this evening. In case you have further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us through chat or to email and we would definitely be happy to assist you and clarify your doubts, inshallah. So that's about it from my end. Uh, Sister Saima, over to you. Jazakallah khairan kathira, Sister Aisha, for responding to all those questions. As we end the session today, we give thanks first to Allah for blessing us with the opportunity to learn about his deen without having to traverse the earth for knowledge. This is indeed a huge blessing. We thank Dr. Bilal for conceptualizing affordable online Islamic education and bringing it to the Ummah. And we express our gratitude to all of the shayukh who teach Islamic knowledge and add Islamic perspective to the secular knowledge, making it relevant to the Ummah. Thanks to all of IOU's behind the scenes staff and volunteers who keep IOU online and running. Finally, Thank you, dear students, for attending and being a part of the IOU family. May Allah bless your efforts and increase your reward. Ameen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.